Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and this is my very last collaboration for this holiday season. I've had such a blast working on all these different collaborative projects over the past month, and I just want to quickly take a moment here to say thank you to everyone who participated to my fellow YouTubers who went along with a lot of my crazy project ideas, and to everybody who watched those videos, who interacted with them, who went and checked out my friends' channels, and also to those who are here now because you watched another creator's video with me. This was such a fun, really joyful way to celebrate the end of the year here on my channel, and I've never done a huge collaboration schedule like this before. It's been something that I've really looked forward to, I've really enjoyed working on, and I'm just so thankful for the whole process and for everybody who participated. Today's video is in collaboration with my friend Teresa from Teresa is Dead. She is the foul mouth garbage queen of my heart. I just truly love her so much. She's so funny, she's so sweet and genuine. Her channel is hilarious. Just a fair warning to anybody who wants to go check out her channel if you're not already subscribed to Teresa. She does swear quite a bit in her videos. So, you know, make sure you're not watching with the kids around, but I highly recommend her. She is so funny, she is no filter, and she is always hilariously honest. She does great reviews. She and I have a lot of really similar tastes in makeup, so I feel very validated by a lot of the things she gives good reviews to, and I always trust her reviews. You've probably heard me talking about Teresa before on my channel because I always use her code when I order from Lethal Cosmetics, and I've also reviewed some of her collaboration palettes with Lethal. Her latest palette, the Teresa is Lethal palette, is actually sold out on the Lethal Cosmetics site right now, but it's still available on the Camera Ready Cosmetics site, so I'm gonna link that down in the description box. I did a swatch and review with this. I really, really, really liked this palette. There are a bunch of other pieces in her collection too, some eyeliners and some cheek products, but the palette is really where it's at for me, personally. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out. If you haven't seen this palette, I highly, highly recommend grabbing it. Certainly, this is a limited edition product, so, you know, make sure you check it out while you can. Now, because Teresa is such a spicy, spicy little tater tot, I knew that we needed a very spicy subject matter for our collaboration video. I don't usually make very spicy subject matter type of videos, short of just giving something a less than stellar review, which is just me reviewing. I don't really consider that to be like a hot take. It's just sharing my experience and my opinion. But today we're going to be talking about some brands that I just keep forgetting about. I know that that sounds kind of shady. It feels shady to say it, but it's true. There's just a lot on the market right now, and it really takes a lot to stay at the top of the attention span. I imagine that it's probably even more difficult to stay on the radar of regular customers and not makeup fanatics like myself and probably a lot of you watching. It's really my job to stay on top of makeup releases and if I cannot keep a brand in my brain, this brain that is intentionally seeking out information about brands, intentionally keeping an eye on what's launching all the time, if you can't stay at the top of this attention span, then I don't know how much of a chance you have for everybody else. Not that I am some superhuman, you know, super important person or anything, but I just dedicate a lot more of my brain space to being aware of beauty launches and beauty brands, I would certainly bet than the average person. And honestly, I'm not out here to just dog on these brands and talk smack about these brands. I'm not interested in that at all. I don't think that is fun, funny, informative. There's not really, I don't really get anything out of that and I'm definitely not interested in any sort of drama. It's actually my nightmare scenario that I talk about one of these brands being forgettable and somebody who works there or God forbid like owns it, runs the brand, watches this and gets their feelings hurt. That is my nightmare scenario. I would never want to be the person that, you know, shared kind of a silly opinion about something like this 
and actually ended up hurting somebody's feelings. I don't want to do like a big long disclaimer thing so if you think that hearing a spicy opinion about a brand that you love is going to hurt your feelings then absolutely for the sake of your happiness probably isn't the one for you and if I don't like something that you love that doesn't mean that I don't like you. Okay, I still love your face. We just have different opinions. I think that's cool. I like that. So now let's get into it. I have two different categories of brands that I just keep forgetting about. We have brands that have lost their luster for me. These are some really well-established brands that either I used to love or I used to check for or I used to see people talking about all the time and they were prominently featured in YouTube videos or at Sephora or whatever it may be. They just used to really be like up there at the top of the game and now they've just for one reason or another lost their luster. So I have four of those brands that lost their luster. And then I have newer brands that just for the life of me I cannot make them stick in my brain. And I noticed kind of a theme among those newer brands that just they just won't they won't go in there they won't stay stuck in my brain. I just can't remember to check for them. They never really they haven't made an impression yet. Let's put it that way. I think there's hope for all of these brands to bounce back. So I'm going to tell you kind of why I keep forgetting about these, why I'm not checking for them, and what I think they could do to maybe get on my radar. It's just one girl's opinion. I know a lot of the Instagram girlies, the clean girl aesthetic girlies are going to be mad about this list. These brands are just too minimal. That's what I've noticed, okay? They just, they don't make an impression on me ever. Ever. Let me show you, I'm gonna show you some pictures so you can see what I mean, all right? These three brands, I've tried stuff from all of these brands and they were fine. They were fine. There was nothing that was making me obsessed. There was nothing that was better than other brands that I either do remember or like the packaging better or got for a better price, you name it. These were fine, they're fine, but I just can't remember them. I always get them confused, I always get the names confused, I forget the name, I have to google it. It just, they're so minimal that they just don't make an impression on me. You could switch these around and swap them out and I would never notice. So. I know a lot of people really like these brands. I don't think that they're bad. They're just not memorable for me. Merit, Ilia, and Sai, say, how do you say it? Don't know, probably looked it up a hundred times. Don't remember. And to a certain degree, Rose Ink kind of falls in this for me as well, but I do think that they have some more memorable packaging. They have this little half circle packaging thing and I think that's way better than a lot of their other products so I hope that they keep kind of going in that direction because I do think they're sort of on the borderline where they're pushing towards doing minimal done right and there are a lot of brands that do minimal right. Frankly I'm not a huge fan of like minimal aesthetic but I see the value in it. I see where that place in the world is and I think there are a lot of brands that do it right. If I just bring up in my head the idea of a minimal packaging aesthetic that's done right, it's still memorable but minimal at the same time. I think of Fenty, I think of Rare Beauty, I think of Milk Makeup or Glossier. These are all very minimal aesthetic type of brands as far as their packaging and even a lot of their products are pretty minimal. But there's something about it that is still recognizable. There's something about it that still sets it apart from other minimal brands. I don't want them to change. I don't want them to become a super cutesy, colorful, you know, Too Faced sweet peach packaging type of brand. I like that too, but I appreciate a really memorable minimal packaging and I would like to see these brands go in that direction more. Look, I know that custom packaging has to be crazy expensive from designing it, producing it, getting things like custom molds made, and then you need special unit cartons for that kind of stuff. 
I understand that has to be crazy expensive. So I don't think it's reasonable for every brand to come out with like ultra custom packaging all the time. Look at like Tower 28 or Milk Makeup. They're not doing these super custom pieces like Fenty and Rare Beauty are, but they still manage to make it their own somehow. Even if it's just a particular use of color, like Ilia came out with this Color Haze multi-use pigment and it has this ombre packaging that's really cute and it's not super extra, it's still very minimal, but it has a little something that's like, oh, I remember what that is. It's just a little bit more eye-catching, but it's not totally extra. It's not, you know, a new custom mold that you have to have cast. Something like this gradient packaging if they made that their thing and they got like a signature color and they put that gradient ombre on all of their product then you would know you would see that color ombre and you would say oh that's it that must be a new Iliad product it would build that brand association I think rose ink is kind of on the right track with that with these little half circle things that they're doing it's still super minimal it's still very much in this neutral very very neutral color scheme which is also very popular among these brands and I don't like it it's just like vanilla ice cream cones over and over again to me I want some sprinkles I want some hot fudge I want a rocky road I want a surprise I want to bite into a chunk of cookie dough every once in a while these brands are obviously still growing they haven't been around for decades they're still kind of finding their footing in the beauty world I don't think that any of them are bad I don't think that any of their formulas are awful I do think that some of them are pretty high price for what they are because if I'm gonna pay 30 US doll hairs for a concealer, it's gotta be really good, especially because I can get a ColourPop Pretty Fresh concealer for eight or nine bucks. But I think there's hope for these brands. I would love to see just a little bit of the volume turned up on the branding. Maybe this whole Instagram clean girl aesthetic thing is going to die off as a trend and that will help kind of push these minimal, minimal, beige, minimal packagings forward and out and up. Even if it was like minimal and beige, but it was glittery, you know, something, a sparkle, give me a sparkle, give me some cookie dough, you know what I'm saying? That metaphor has been beaten to death, let's move on. I think these brands that are a lot more minimal with their packaging, but manage to sort of stay in the collective consciousness, as at least as far as I'm concerned, they have a few things in common. They are still recognizable, but they're not gimmicky, they're not flashy, they're not over the top, and they have really strong staple products that are sometimes super innovative, but no matter what, they're like strong staple products. And then they release a very small handful of more flashy or special releases, maybe once or twice a year. I think that's the way to go. I hope to see it. I hope to see it. Let's move on to brands that lost their luster. These used to be really at the top of the game for me. They were on top of the world when the beauty boom started in like the early 2010s. These were the brands everybody was checking for. They were making our staple product. They could do no wrong, okay? Every launch was a hit. Four brands for me that have lost their luster, I just, I kind of keep forgetting about them even though they used to be at the top of my list to check in with all the time. Benefit, which is actually the brand that sparked my idea for this video. Smashbox, I was convinced that they had gone out of business and I had to Google it to see if they were still around because I just hadn't heard anything from them literally since Becca shut down and they started selling like two Becca products. And then ever since then, crickets. And then Stila, Stila Cosmetics, kind of dropped off the radar for me. And the absolute worst one, because this is a brand that I really, really like. I really, really like this brand a lot and I want to see them win. I want to see all of these brands do well, but if I had to pick one that was like, okay, you can push a button and magically like save this brand and revive it back to life, it would be Lorac Cosmetics. I love Lorac. I love their formulas. I really, really like their eyeshadow palettes. I think that they've done some super cool products over the years and I think that what they do release 
they do really well. But I definitely remember to check on them maybe three times a year. And it makes me sad because I really like the brand. Even when I'm using their palettes and stuff, I'm still, it still doesn't occur to me to be like, oh, have they released anything new? No one knows, haven't heard from them. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Lorac. I love you. I want you. I want you to thrive. I want you to thrive. In general, I think that what these four brands have in common as far as losing their luster is they just kind of got stuck in a rut they had, you know, one or two things that did really well and they tried to just do those things over and over and over again with those hit products. And they didn't really keep up with continual innovation. They didn't keep up with friends. And over time, they just sort of got buried in the overall conversation of new, new, new things that were coming out. Benefit in particular got stuck in their boxed blush rut and they still kind of are because I'm pretty sure their most recent release was like more boxed blushes, which is fine. I love blush. I love blush. I will buy a hundred blushes. I don't care. But I need sort of, I need new things. I need to see a new point of view. I need to see a new innovation. I need a formula that's gonna be different, that's gonna be exciting, that's gonna solve a problem, something, something. I just, I don't need more boxed blushes. Maybe I do, I don't know, maybe I do. I think the same thing sort of happened with Stila, where they came out with those little glitter eyeshadow, the little like rectangular glitter eyeshadow things, what are they called? Glitter and glow liquid eyeshadows. They came out with those and people were really, really into them. I had some, I thought they were pretty good and I'm not really a big liquid eyeshadow fan. They just started coming out with more shades of those and they came out with like some matte ones, I think, I don't know. And they just sort of rested on those liquid eyeshadow laurels. I don't know what the heck happened with Smashbox. They released a couple of new products, some little like limited edition collection things and I think they sort of just lost their identity a little bit in there. Also their cover shop palettes, their little eyeshadow palettes as were not good for me. They just sort of stalled out a little bit. And then for Lorac, Lorac used to have some really cool limited edition items. They used to make these mega palettes that were all the rage. Then they stopped doing the mega palettes. They stopped, they had a couple of really, really cute, cool, trendy palettes that were unbelievable. So good. Quality-wise, they were ahead of their time for some of their packaging and their color stories. I just really, really thought they were great. I thought they were on a roll. Lorac released this palette called California Dreaming that was so cute. This was like five years ago. And then they had a series of unzipped palettes that were unzipped sunset, unzipped ocean sunset, unzipped desert sunset. And these had this really cool packaging that was like a flexible cover, had some really beautiful like ombre look to the packaging. The colors were really interesting. The formulas were top notch. Those were such good releases. I think if Lorac came back with something like that, something with a colorful packaging, a really colorful color scheme, because they have gone way the other direction. All black palettes, all neutral releases. We are fighting for our lives for a colorful eyeshadow from Lorac. I think if they came back and really made a splash with a colorful mega palette or even a more edited, unzipped type of release with their same great beautiful high performing formulas, but they did something bold. I think now that would be incredibly well received. That's really what I want to see from Little Rock. I want to see some color, some splash. I want to see a mega palette because they really shined in that arena. And I do think that they could do it again. And I think that they will do it again. I'm ready to see it. Get rid of these little rinky dink, little mini palettes. Get rid of these little glittery neutrals on neutrals on neutrals and do something to really go for it. I think they could do it. I would love to see it. Thought we were gonna get it with that fairy tale forest idea. Maybe we're on our way. Maybe that's the first baby step towards really doing something with some pizzazz. Personally, I think that's what Lorac needs to be back on top. I don't think it would take much because their products are really, really great. For Benefit, I think they just need to do something besides blush. If Benefit dropped a really good quality eyeshadow palette, like something along the lines of the balm. Do you remember the balm? 
They could probably be on this list too because I haven't thought about them in a really long time. They're still in business, right? We could, we could definitely put the balm in this video as well. If they did something like that, came out with one or two really cool, really high quality eyeshadow palettes, I think that people would go nuts for that. And you know, they have the aesthetic down already. They know what their brand voice is. And I think that that voice could translate into an eyeshadow palette or a set of like two or three eyeshadow palettes. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. As far as Smashbox and Stila, what would they have to do to be back on my radar? I think that they could both probably use a pretty significant rebrand, like brand overhaul, because it's just more of the same thing that they've been making for like years and years and years. I think it would be cool to see them really kind of pare back their existing line and then come out with a rebrand and really make a statement with a rebranding because there are a lot of bigger brands that are in the same arena with Smashbox, with Stila. Like think about Too Faced, NARS, even MAC. But I think the most successful similar brand is Tarte. I think Tarte has done a lot of mini rebrands over the years and I think they've stayed pushing out new types of products. I think they've stayed really formula forward. Tarte has not gone without any bumps in the road, that's for sure, but I feel like they really rose to the challenge whereas some these other brands that I'm talking about today have kind of stayed stuck in a rut. That's enough for today. Just remember that this is just one person's opinion. I'm just sharing my feelings. I'm not saying this is fact. I'm not saying these brands fell off or that they're garbage or anything like that. I think that there's more that they could do to up their status on my list of brands to check for. And I can't be the only one. I cannot wait to see what brands Teresa talks about. I have no idea what she's gonna say, what brands she's gonna talk about in her video. I'm sure it's gonna be an absolute hilarious watch though. I highly recommend that you go check out Teresa's video. Go check out her channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Go give her palette a look over on the Camera Ready Cosmetics site. She has a fun, colorful style. She has a great eye for interesting color combinations. So her tutorials are always really fun to watch. All around, I just recommend her as a content creator, as a collaborator, as a human being. So I hope you'll go give her video some love too. Now's the time when I trepidatiously ask what you think about these brands. Maybe some of these brands that I'm always forgetting about are at the top of your list for a different reason. What are some brands that just can't quite make an impression on you? I always love to hear what you think about things too. Even if we disagree, that's okay, as long as we do it politely. I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I've had, huh? The Kalit Kalit is her palette still available? If it is, I'm gonna plug her palette too, hold on. Okay, it's out of stock on Lethal, hold on. No, I don't want, don't give me a pop-up ad, I don't care. Hoy oy oy. It's gonna be a, all beige everything. Blah. A bunch of people will now be in the comments saying, why this big disclaimer, you shouldn't have to say it. I know I shouldn't have to say it. I don't have to say it, I'm choosing to say it because somebody needs to hear it. Oh geez, I am like sweating. I'm not ready. Look, please just don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. I can't. Just don't be mad, okay? Look, these brands are not people. I'm having some chocolate. They're not people. A brand is a business. They can't love you the way that you love them. You know what I'm saying? I hope that you'll be back soon. And that's it. Okay, I love your face. Okay, bye.